Hello, this is Hawker Bean, and today we are going to r slash D&D Horror Stories. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Oh, whoops. That's what's already be here. Let's just pretend it was. <laughs> I was the DM's favorite. It was social hell. So this all, all happened a few years back. With a friend group that I have split apart from since. For very good reasons. We were playing a DD and d game. And, and but set in a World War II style of wartime and setting. Padilla was kind of obsessed with military and army stuff. But also hated elves. So of course the elves were Nazi adjacent. Hmm. I am a staunch elf lover, but I want to respect the M's canon without hurting the party by having a character who would constantly be mistaken for a bad guy. So I made a half-orc, half-elf fighter who was lawful good. The M was excited. We conspired about how there could be potential drama and pitfalls and all sorts of things that could uh, result from my character's mixed race heritage. <sighs> Meanwhile, the other players made their own characters. The characters of interest here were the DM's girlfriend's character, a wizard who was a Southern Belle type and dreamed of being famous, and the DMPC, a sniper. That's all. Boy, DM, that's a pretty boring character. The session starts with the characters meeting and the DMPC being assigned to their fleet. The DMPC was a brooding, rude sniper who didn't care for being friendly, but the rest of the party was pretty jubilant and excited. We didn't pay the DMPC much attention, nor did we respect him. First mistake, Southern Bell Wizard makes fun of the DMPC and gets into a small argument with him. Second mistake, in the battle, in the battle my fire does a lot of heavy hits, and with every enemy she finds, she offers him the option of surrender instead of dying, which many of them take. Meanwhile, the rest of the party is murdering enemies. This isn't abnormal for their alignment. I'm the one who has a good alignment at all. I take that very seriously in games, but I do that partially to be a straight man and to, the, uh, to a party's antics. Also, DM approved their alignment. However, the murdering was the third and final mistake. At the end of the battle, my character passes is is out rations to the surrendered enemies, giving them water, general lawful good stuff. A war journalist approaches, asks my character specifically for photos and quotes. I'm a bit taken aback. Seems odd. I play along with my character would and insist that my team is a part of why the mission succeeded. They take pictures and apparently it makes front page news. Nothing about the team other than praising my character for being a strong and noble leader. DM's girlfriend is upset because her character's whole thing is being famous, and a journalist is kept brushing her character off. DM says that my character was especially heroic. I am embarrassed. We get it back from the main mission. DMPC tries to talk to the team. Sudden Bell ignores and is rude to DMPC. The game ends soon, and DM seems pissed. DM is my ride. DM is also. Well, DM's girlfriend's right, obvious. I mean, this is it was kind of a given. I have to sit in the car and listen to DM start to cry about how nobody engaged with the DMPC, and how it was unfair and that I was the only one who was respectful of the setting. DM's girlfriend gets mad because she was playing her Southern Belle as written, including being mean to people who aren't friendly or hospitable. I say that the party didn't connect with the DMPC as much because we had no other enemies, and it's fun to have someone to band together against. DM is still hurt, but I'm home, so I get the fuck out of there. DM matches us uh, saying that, that the way we played was abhorrent and disrespectful, besides my character. Keeps pointing out how I treated setting and characters with respect and realism, and that the party needs to learn from my character. DM says they can't do the game anymore, and cause it quits. But I was curious, DM and girlfriend are still together, last I heard. Whew, I feel bad for her. A 
I mean, that's just a bad situation and for everyone uninvolved. The DM should have known better than to take a, a in-character interaction so... Um, personally. But that's just my opinion on that. Anyway, Star Wars Horror Story Collection. I would love to play a Star Wars RPG for once that doesn't fall apart before Session 1 or turns into a small-scale horror story. However, this has yet to happen. Here are some snippets. Join the game of Edge of the Empire. Focus around the Outer Rim in the original trilogy timeline. Basically Wild West RP and space. Two players refuse to tell, me to re to tell the rest of the group what they are playing before the game. Weird, but okay. Then the first session begins. Both of them present their characters. Both are his lightsaber wielding Mandalorians. One being a full fledged edge Jedi, the other dual wields him. In a post Order 66 setting. I kind of roll my eye, -eye about that and try to ignore it. Until one of the two loudly complained to the DM. He can't do a wield with lightsabers, so no Jedi left to have trained him in it. He would have cut off his own arms. I use a light in Mandalorian Jedi with a lightsaber. Well the other Mando joins the argument, shouting at the Mandal Jedi for being jealous that his character is just cooler than his and that he has to suck it up. Their insults last for about five minutes, until the DM just decides this leaves the Discord and it's never heard from again. You you should go into the DM expecting to be playing with people. I'm assuming you're all adults, so people who are who are adults. And then when you hear complaints like this, it it sounds really childish. Edge of the Empire. Edge is already included. Join an Edge of Empire game. The clear side in recruiting posts, it will be a heroic campaign, with ex bandits and other fringe society people rising up to be the hope of the people. Also, no force sensitive characters, at least not at the start. They hint that we might unlock force potential later on. I joined the Discord, a handful of other players do the same. I think about playing a medic or something like that, and ask around what they think. They want to play Sith. Every single one of them. The DM again states that this is Edge of the Empire. It's a heroic campaign and there will be no force sensitive characters, let alone trained force users. They throw a, a tantrum. If you don't want us to play Force users, why offer to play Star Wars at all? They leave, I remain. The DM tries to get new people. People. Old people. What? People doesn't find any game to bit this fancy for session one. You just can't find adults in for or D&D sometimes, I swear. Funny because like kids can be really, really, e e e e e good at making up really interesting characters in D and D, but sometimes they can just be so annoying to try and play with because, as they throw tantrums when they don't get it their way or when and and there are rules in the game. Getting turned into a dragon by another player. Full story. Uh, turned into a dragon? I don't even know. Let's just read this and find out what the heck happened. I posted this before, but this is a retrospective slash follow-up post on this. It's a fun time. Please enjoy. 
A little while ago, I invited a friend to join a D&D campaign. I was enjoying well up to this point, and I was excited to introduce them as this was uh, their first time playing. This was the first time they played D&D. I introduced them to my group, and everything had been going well. However, I did not know what I was getting myself or my character into. I played a tiefling warlock slash fighter multiclass called Dorio, a worshipper of my custom deity, the Unchained Mother, whose whole deal is freedom and being very anti-slavery. Dorio is a is an ex-slave who recently broke out of his group and himself who recently broke out his group and himself from slavery, as slavery was a big part of the setting and the rebellion against it. My friend played Grunk, a half-orc, wild magic barbarian, and sorcerer who was the brother of an NPC who had died earlier in the story, unlike his brother. Grunk was a bit of an asshole, being overly aggressive, stubborn, and racist. Having been a slaver as one of his previous jobs, that where a character wasn't very fond of him, and it was mutual. Though we were eventually forced to work together due to mutual benefit. It all started when my character Dorio was out hunting information about the big bad evil guy, trying to hunt him down. He is a sort of shadow government, great wizard behind the evil and slavery in the world. During which he met with Grunk, who proceeded to immediately be racist. Calling my character a fucking teeth link. And I said it like that because it's spelled fucking instead of fucking. And it sounded funnier. My character took it rather gracefully as this guy had leads, and at this point, he was used to it. <sighs> Grunk agreed to help the party with the understanding that he was in debt to some bad people and needed some money from a job to pay it off. My character agreed. As we went out to explore an underwater temple, alongside Idorio and Grump was a changeling druid, very complicated, called Sin, whose character was a multitude of attachment issues, and upon seeing Grunk, who looked like his big brother, she was very attached to their brother, I may believe that Grunk was her brother and sorry treated them as such. We made our way down to the temple, which had ancient scriptures on the wall, depicting some heavy lore, which my character paid attention to, ooh, Meanwhile, Grunk ignored most of it and rushed ahead, getting themselves into a fight with the golem. After a round or two, Dorio joined in and helped finish off the golem. It's around this point, very important, that Grunk stole from Sin a reward from previous quests he went on. A bag of cursed coins, which allow you to make a, a wish, but works like a monkey's paw, twisting your words to make the wishes happen in unexpected or bad ways. We continued on as I learnt more lore, and we had one other. Uh, I wouldn't. We had another combat encounter until we reached the final chamber, which had an ancient dragon, a leviathan skeleton, and a dragon's egg in it. Naturally, I panicked a bit as the DMs had started. I say before that dragons in his setting are stronger than base D, and this was one of the most powerful dragon types. Casually napping, and I was out of spell slots. I suggested to the party to take a short rest so I could get my spell slots ba back so I could cast invisibility on everyone. The dragon was asleep after all. However, Grunk barged into the final chamber and grabbed the dragon's egg, which immediately woke the ancient dragon up. You're playing with a freaking idiot. Or someone who is who is purposefully trying to like break the game and fuck things up. Naturally, we all began running. However, during the chase, the dragon spread the seventy damage to the other two party members in one breath attack. So Grunk took the coins he had stolen and wished that Doya was the dragon's favorite food, so that he and Sin could escape. I was floored. This was, uh, naturally, a total betrayal. Luckily, the DM thought quick and said that my character turned into a dragon egg, 
since the egg was the dragon's favorite thing and eggs are food. The dragon took the Dory egg back to his nest while Grunk and Sin escaped. Sin wanted to go back for my character, but Grunk held them back. Meanwhile, my character spoke to my patron about an intervention. So while they couldn't revert my character, they did speed up the draconic growth and filter the magic so my character's soul then burst with the excess magic. Next session started and my character hatched, now at the beginning stages of a draconic transformation. Cursed to eventually become a full dragon, however for now was simply a hybrid, a dragonborn. I stuck out the dragon's lair without a problem. Having replenished my spell slots, invisibility is great. And sneaking to the entrance of the temple where he waited, since it was underwater, and Grunk had a water breathing had the water breathing potions. Later, Grunk and Sin returned as my character hid in the shadows. As they discussed what to do, Grunk wanted to sell the Idori egg. So naturally, my character beat the shit out of him. It was cathartic. However, Sin pleaded with Doria to spare him, so he did. It is something less like a horror story and more just like a fun story. Because it looks like, in out of character, you're actually playing pretty nice, but... In character, you're playing really a, um, well, mean to each other, but I think that's just in character or, or, or drama at this point. Over the course of the next couple of sessions, Grunt continued to be problematic to my character, constantly racist and constantly trying to justify his own slaver past. I did what I had to grow up on these streets. I either stepped on my fellows and sold them, or I would have been homeless. Oh no, homeless, how awful. It's so much worse than being in a slave, huh? God damn. Meanwhile, Dorio pointed out that if it if that was true, he should want to change the system for so people wouldn't be forced to that. And if being a slave was the only way to live comfortably, he would prefer to be harmless homeless with intact morals. Somewhere on the a Grunk sorry to get it in his head that Dario was being manipulative for having moral objections to slavery. And that Dario was just as bad as the slavers? What the fuck? You know, it doesn't matter, in game or out of game. How do you uh, 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 tell someone who had this history with slavery, was a slave in the past, or had ancestors that were slaves, and then say that they're just as bad as the slavers? Can you freaking imagine? Despite them basically being the reincarnation of John Brown, which was mutually frustrating for everyone. And every action Oreo took that wasn't conforming to what Grunk wanted was scrutinized by Grunk and our character the player was objected to the idea of Grunk having a redemption arc. It was getting harder and harder to justify Dorio tolerating Grunk at all as his uneasy partnership was turning more and more hostile. Yeah, I'm sorry, but the player behind Grunk seems to be... Uh, it's starting to sound a lot more and more like, a, like someone who would defend the Confederacy. Or rather, just slavery in general, and that's just weird. At one point, Grunk threatened to leave the party, and Doria went, Okay, go. I don't want you here. Note, Grunk was only hanging around for potential of reviving his brother. But fortunately, Grunk stayed, 
The player wanted Dario to manipulate Grunk into saying, which was so out of character of Dario for or out of character for Dario, it was unreal. He would throw a stink over the idea of Dario killing Slaper henchmen because they were just thinking what they had to do to survive. Honestly, I hate I, 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 this crap because it's like you should have researched your, your job. You knew what you're getting into. You signed up for it. Whatever happened in Stramit, it is just what happens. And also, your or 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 slave or, or henchman. I think you probably are are doing this willingly. I wouldn't budge on his character becoming a better person at all. Frequently getting into fights with my character. All the while, my character was undergoing painful dragon transformations due to Grunk. Eventually, Grunk saw a giant diamond which he immediately wanted to steal. The diamond was a conduit controlling a bunch of slaves in the mine. So to get to the loot first, he jumped down onto the crystal and stepped which stabbed into him. Killing Grunk and merging him with the crystal. Dorio did not mourn his death. Soon after the player left the campaign. He won't be missed and naturally I won't be inviting him back to the table. Evil. Classic Grunk. He does a bit of trolling. Seems like it. <laughs> God damn. The uh, I used to be a slaver to defending a slavery archetype. Oh no. Okay. The I used to be a slavery ever to defending slavery archetype is so oh unreal to me. Absolutely insane. All right. Worst PC character archetype. I'm currently playing with someone that joined in halfway through our campaign. He instantly decided to go to Lone Wolf. I don't need any of you archetype. Oh yeah, and he decided to go racist as well. I don't mind the ignorant posh upper class that appears is too high and above everyone else, but what what I enjoy when people go oh, that route is the character development when they find out hey maybe other people with a with different upbringings aren't so bad. This dude, however, calls our half orc a green skinned savage, and our tabaxi a freak. Freak? That's it? I'm sorry. There are so many D D races. And the best freaking and an an idea of being racist to a tabaxi is just calling them a freak. Not a cat. Not some I'm sort of cat related insult. What the fuck? I mean... Don't get me wrong, I do ooh, ooh, dislike the whole entire racist thingy, but... You know. But like, I, I, I at least make it a, a creative and have a reason for it. Nothing else, no name, just that and we all just let it slide? He started off saying his character has choice feelings towards elk, orcs. And I'm like, oh, maybe he doesn't like them because a group of them murdered his family? No, that's because he's human and they're not. That's not a reason, that's just an observation. That's not a reason to hate anyone. He goes off into the night, doesn't sleep at our home base in the city, literally spends his actual gold nightly to be away from the group. 
Also, he gatekeeps every piece of information he finds out. I'm hoping he will get some character development later, but I think a racist with no friends decided to play a racist with no friends in D&D. <laughs> he always goes on about it, how his previous group and how much they sucked and why he left. And it's apparent that to him, everyone else in the world doesn't play D&D the way he wants to play it. He decided to go Warlock and Paladin that, at just power games when he tries to roleplay. He speaks in his regular voice and then gets offended when people don't understand if he's talking character or not. No, a lot of people roleplay in their regular voice. Even I have a hard time making up voices for our characters. <sighs> We have two other characters that don't do voice and don't get offended by this. Because, duh, we don't know, and, and myself and one of another, it's obvious when we're role-playing, we don't do a voice. We, I mean, we do a voice. Once again, a lot of people don't role-play with the voice. You just have to kind of learn the difference from, based on what they're saying. The game is online, and we all met virtually because we wanted to find a game on consistent on a consistent basis. Everyone is playing to play D&D. This dude clearly loves the game, but hates the fact you need other individuals to play. Did this dude not hear about Baldur's Gate? I think that would be perfect for him. It's where or people like this can play D&D without having to be around other people, so they don't have, have to bug other people or with their uh, racism. It's a great a game to play. Especially for people like this. Anyway, now my rant is over. Has anyone else dealt with similar PCs? What's another weird character archetype you, uh, you've come across? <sighs> Alright, next story. Oh dear. DM hates players. Is a huge ass with rules. Very recent. Ran a campaign with two GMs, and goddamn, this is the worst GM I've seen in so long. One and what GM was absolute dog shit. So first warning sign: the GM power trips like hell. They refer to themselves as the god of the game when they're told a rule that works in this scenario or explain how certain things work. They get mad and make their own rules out of nowhere. This GM was horrible with the rules to the point and where they didn't even know what a saving throw was despite this not being their first campaign. It happened a lot. Second warning sign, the GM is super controlling. There are so many examples to name, so I'll just go through notable ones. Had character's entire fates planned out, including unavoidable death. Oh, goodbye player agency. Fucking hell. Commonly took over as god. And had the players go places they wanted them to go by force, despite lack of planning. Okay, probably the worst GM I've heard of so far. You know, your main job as a GM is to just simply throw monsters at your players and make sure that the story goes according to plan. Or that the story just goes at all. But you aren't supposed to force people to go places when they aren't ready. I'm mean, sure I pretty much kind of am trying to speedrun the end of this campaign, but I have a lot out of new ideas and I want to uh, get to them as soon as possible with my players. <sighs> Force pl people to who RP exactly how they wanted. Revealing character details to party, using characters' voices, never speaking out of character, etc. Yeah, this is horrible. 
chose to not allow characters to pick their race or class upon death. Yeah, this isn't even a joke. If a character died, the DM would make them a new one. When this was revealed and players requested races, they went as far as to tell them and um, they do the exact opposite. I would never play with a gym that did this. If I died in, in, in a D&D game, which shouldn't be really that uh, easy to do unless I'm really being stupid on purpose, and then I ask to choose my own class and race, and a GM says, no, I'm going to do the exact opposite. Like, if I'm like, okay, well, that was fun. Can I be a cute elf this time? And they're like, no, you're going to be a dwarf. A very masculine dwarf. And it's like, okay, I'm done playing with you. Because one thing that I do is to play feminine characters. And I refuse to play otherwise. Nerfed abilities and spells on the spot if it did something they didn't want it to do. For example, telepathic speech being ignored by anyone with a semblance of magic talent, detect magic not finding school of magic, great water just not being allowed to be used, dissonant whispers doing less damage in a single spear set, ab, told rolled max damage on two guards while twinning it, neither died, and more. Took pretty much all suggestions as insults, Really blew others off when trying to suggest a rule or recommendation, etc. So you have a GM that is power hungry and refuses to compromise or 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 learn how to play a game with other people. And even more than this, why did you keep playing with them? Third warning sign. Whoa! Third? Hell no. Got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we are at nine warning signs. This is the ninth warning sign, not the third. These are all warning signs on their own right. You're at nine warning signs right now. Anyway, ninth warning sign. I'm not. I'm not saying third. Demanding players have certain IRL items and such. No digital dice allowed. No online sheets allowed. You have to have, have a motherfucking camp handles for am ambience. You have to have a webcam, etc. That's just weird. But then again, I play on Roll20 lately. Last warning sign. A deep hatred for spellcasters. Wizards could only pick spells from their school, spells within melee a range uh, and, and, and opportunity attacks. Pretty much every area could entirely negate magic. Prison had anti-magic, entirely most of the uh, majors. Entirely of most major cities were ma anti-magic. It's one disease fed up when magic was used, and these were all back-to-back -back plot points. But when their magic NPCs used it, they could pretty do pretty much anything with ease despite being like a random overlay sitting around town in the desert. None of these things were established prior to the campaign, and the majority of, ease of, of the players are brand new to D&D. So they're manipulating players so that they don't know how to play D&D. So they don't know that these are, are horrible signs. This was their introduction to the game. Like, my first DM wasn't a shining example, but he had but he at least had good grips on the rules. This team is just horrible. I feel ba so bad for the other players. TLDR, extreme railroading, extreme cyber, and very bad at understanding of the rules, super controlling, and a rude DM. Alright. That was horrible. That's like a nightmare in DM. And I remember my first DM was quite a nightmare as well. A lot of his nightmareness kind of came out after the game. Oh dear, my tracking is not working too well. That's fine. Uh, 
I think I was the problem. A buddy of mine was running a game of 3.5. I've been like to use a lot of homebrew of internet stuff. He was playing on an army game, and let us know we'd be commanders. I was playing on playing a flamboyant spell of scale marshal with spike chain, going chain master, etc. He gave us a heap of gold to start and let us take a flaw for a free defeat. I said hell yes and picked a flaw. I didn't use the money provided with Jim. But DM support, DM was aware of all our decisions and used it for cast for casting of Awakening and got a little Spire Monkey Awakened. And dressed him in scaled down versions of all my flamboyant outfits for fun. <sighs> Another member of the party was a sorcerer and a good friend. And from session one, whenever we ran into a non-combat issue, locked the door, etc., I would ask him to solve it, use knock or a different spell, and he would tell me he didn't have that spell. I would suggest resting so he could use his spellbook to take it. And he would get exasperated telling me he was a sorcerer. And I would make a comment. Well, maybe if you went to a proper school with a real book learning. So this went on for many sessions, and then the sorcerer found out. My flaw I got for my bonus feat was illiteracy. And my awakened fire monkey who lived on my shoulder would do all my reading of letters, maps, etc. When the sorcerer found out, he exploded and from his chair and bellowed out, You can't read? <laughs> it was a great moment, but I do worry I may have genuinely upset him with my snobby RP. Thanks for reading. That was hilarious. And I have to agree with this comment. I think the character concept is funny. This guy from someone who has a barbarian dumb enough that he thinks he's a sorcerer. <laughs> that's that's an amazing freaking and flaw uh, to uh, try and hide. And that's such a hilarious way to uh, hide it too. Okay, last story. This one being the most egregious. My DM has started to enforce a dress code for our sessions. Is this normal? No. Dress codes in general are not normal, if you ask me. They weren't normal in school because as it was like teacher or or, or is being weird about out kids' bodies and that's just weird. But dress codes in general are never normal, they're just weird. It's a weird power trip, and that's all it ever has been. A weird power trip for people to have over other people. Anyway, we're all new to D&D in my group, and a couple weeks ago my DM sent us all a message saying that we need to be careful what we, what we wear to our sessions. There is only one woman in our group, and now that we're reaching summer, sometimes she will come to our sessions wearing things like tank tops or shorts. This could be extremely distracting for our group, Learn not to stare, don't tell me what to wear. I will usually just make a few comments about her and then get back to focusing on the game. Our guess our DM is who is upset because he's a he's a creep about it because he said we all have to wear shirts with sleeves. If we if we wear shorts they have to go down on your knees. Oh, so you're a creep. Good to know. Is our DM going too far by giving us a dress code? I think the entire party except for that one woman is being really creepy here. But the DM is is going way too far and being extremely creepy. It kind of rubs me the wrong way that he thinks he can tell everyone what to wear to our weekly session. I know a lot of people would uh, probably say that the DM isn't going too far, but I don't care. Stop being creeps.
Exactly. I feel like the entire party is really creepy. Like, literally, this could be extremely distracting for a, a group, but we usually make a few comments about her. Don't. Don't do that. That's what the DM has asked for a dress code, to try and stop the harassment. But it's normal as playing D&D at D&D, not getting up on the one woman there to talk about what she's wearing. Thank you. Who feels the need to call on a woman wearing perfectly normal clothes? That's creepy. That's what I'm saying. It is so freaking creepy to... The entire time that I was reading this story... freaking hate that, that username. It's just a whole bunch of I's and I think lowercase L's. Maybe. Maybe it's, it's uppercase I's. I can't tell. It's bugging me. Anyway. The whole thing about... How, how everyone else in, these, in the e group, except for the one... About everyone in the group commenting about what the one lady is wearing is so fucking weird. Like, grow the hell up. You know what you're there for? You're there for... D&D. You are not there to... Uh, to creep on and, uh, and stare at another person's body. God damn, that just... Gross. Alright, that was our slash D and D horror stories. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!